Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today I'm going to show you how to make a sign using dimensional lumber, and wait until you see all the different options that you can make. These thinner strips are made out of a furring strip, which means that they are super rough hewn on one side, a little bit smoother on the other, but their edges are not smooth. This is to go behind drywall and other like supportive construction things, but it's thinner and it's a lighter weight, less chunky look. So we like this. Just know that you have to do a little bit of extra prep. So I'm gonna push this aside. I've got my 60 grit sandpaper and I am going to get rid of the super rough edges. Okay, and I'm gonna go this direction. And I might need to break out the secret weapon. I love my sanding blocks, but every now and again, you just need to pull out a little piece of sandpaper. When we pull this sandpaper out of here, it has little teeth right there, and all of that sandpaper in that strip is unused. And so that is perfect sandpaper for this little bucket. And then I'll pull these out when I need to get into tight grooves and stuff like that. And I'll feel it, do some more, glasses on, see what I see. Do my edges. Okay, that's getting smoother and now I'll go into something in a smoother, there's a 220. See my little teeth marks? Fold it up to give myself just a little bit of body. Feel that, that's getting much better. Sand on top, get my 220, sand on top. That looks, that feels so good, it's so smooth. Now I'll get my edges and I'll just go around all the pieces of lumber, paying attention to my end grain. Um, that is going to be where I just smooth that so it's not sharp right there and then I'll sand it to fine finish it all the way around and that makes it so much nicer for your finished piece. I'll go on my end pieces like this, the same exact way over the whole piece on my end grains, finish with my 220 and that is gonna make everything super nice. All right, now that I've got things sanded, we're gonna take our paper towel and we're just gonna take a regular paper towel. We're gonna wipe everything off if we find anything that's rough, we'll go ahead and make that smoother and just get all the extra dust wiped off. You wanna go both sides, even though I didn't spend much time sanding on the back and get it all dusted off. You also wanna do one last step and you wanna wipe off your countertop. If you're working in the garage or something like that, just make sure your tabletop is nice and sanded off. I am seeing so many particles of dust there's gonna need to be a vacuum session in here. Today I'm gonna to use an oil base um, finish. This is Minwax wood finish and it is a premium oil base. I am going to open it up. And this is gonna be stinky, so you wanna follow the manufacturer instructions. Um, always follow the manufacturer instructions. We have chopped down little paint stirs so that they're not so tall like they were this big. And I'm gonna stir my finish. I can already smell that stain. We're gonna stain this inside, it's cold today. I'm gonna stain it inside and then immediately we're gonna get out of here and take the stained boards into a ventilated area like a garage. During our pandemic, I couldn't get nitrile gloves and so we learn to use full top plastic bags as gloves and they work great and they're super cheap. Okay, so I put my hands in there and then we are going to take a Scott paper towel, this is shop towel, and we're going to soak up the stain and we're going to apply it to all of the surfaces all the way around. This is super repetitive, so we're not gonna show it all you just wanna do one side, then the other side, then the other side. Every side has four sides. Get it done. You can do more than one coat if you want to. Um, 
And then after you're done, you're going to take another paper towel and you're going to wipe it back. And that is how you're going to get a beautiful stained surface. And I think it's not just four sides, it's actually six sides because we also have the end grain. The end grain is always gonna turn out really dark like that. And we're just gonna pick up our other towel, wipe that back, wipe that back, and keep our gloves on. You almost could work methodically and just get everything stained, some paper, um, some newspaper or some brown paper bags underneath your work area would keep everything underneath just nice and tidy. Um, it's important that you don't allow stain to dry in a clump and then restain over it. Like if I stained the end and didn't wipe it back, it could make like a gnarly little mess. So you wanna be careful of that. All right, guys, I've done it. I've got my boards prepped. We're gonna paint tomorrow. I've got the fans running in here, so it just ventilates the area. I've got my boards out in the garage, getting their dry time, and tomorrow is gonna to be paint day. All right, we have our boards stained, they're dried, and they don't stink anymore. So we are ready to assemble our board, um, or our tray, or our sign, or our coat rack or whatever you want to be building with this. Um, this works the same for any of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, make it so that my boards don't shift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this cloth, this old, this is a Dollar Tree towel. Um, that way you can get paint on it and you don't have to worry. And that will prevent my boards, once I stick them on here, it will keep my boards from shifting like they would on just a slick surface. Now, when you are doing your wood signs, you have choices because I've stained everywhere. Do I want that busy right there? Do I want the busy this direction? So you're kind of already painting just by laying out where you want your different boards. So I am literally deciding whether I want um, that detail in the middle or do I like it a little bit plainer? Um, do I want that up? Do I want that down? Um, a lot of it will depend on what kinds of detail is in your stencil. Let's talk about what your different options are. So we just talked about painting with the knots and the grain of the wood. So a lot of this is gonna depend on what you're building. So not everybody's gonna need a, um, a leash board or something like that, but you can do um, for a coffee bar and have it go sideways just like this project is. You could also make your dimensional lumber into a lovely serving tray. Add handles and now you have a nice tray. This would be great on top of like an ottoman or something like that so that you could um, have it a sturdy surface on top of your padded um, surface. And then you could also take this one we've got assembled, not painted. Well, we started painting it. You could have it go long ways and put your hooks this way. So if your wall space is at a premium, you might do better with something like that. So don't forget, you don't always have to stain. You can also paint and you can also turn these around and you can use them without the support boards showing. So you can just make it into a nice plaque. And then I don't know if you've seen on Pinterest where they make the boards go at different elevations and different heights and stuff like that. So you have a lot of options. The assembly is basically the same for all of them. Just depends on what hardware you're using and um, what you're, where you're gonna put your boards. But other, other than that, they're the same. When I'm placing my knots and my details, I can take my stencil and I can lay it over and see if those said knots will interrupt with my painting. I wouldn't want to say have my L end right on the tip of a knot because that would make it look like a different letter. So be careful with that. Um, make sure that you're paying attention. Okay, so I think that I like having that knot. I'm gonna see if I have something more. I have a lot of interesting stuff over here. Let's see if I like that better. With this. So this, my L is going right through this big old thing right here, so I am gonna go ahead and flip it the other way. And then just make sure that, okay, those are nice and out of the way. I don't see anything else interfering, so this is gonna be my layout. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you are going to put your boards together and you could secure them with a little bit of tape 
just to keep everybody lined up. A little sticky always helps, right? Okay, and then instead of the towel, you can also use that barkeeper um, rubber mat that you use for like lining your drawers in your kitchen and stuff like that. Um, that works really good for non-skid, great under your cutting boards, really great for that. Okay, so we've got this done and now we're going to, we do have a drop shadow and we do have to measure and we have to do all kinds of little preppy prep steps. So we need to know how long our board is. Our board is 32 inches. And so if I'm going in half of 32, then we are going to be at 16 inches. And then I'm gonna use my ghost writer and we'll mark right smack in the middle. And then I'll go ahead and give myself just a nice straight line all the way down, just for layout. And then we're gonna see, I think my stencil's big enough that I can rest it on that bottom line. Oh, I need to find the middle of my stencil. Okay, so we'll go here. Find our center of our stencil, and we'll do it in two places. And then line that up with our mark. And then I think that this resting on here is giving me a good balance of weight, so I think we're gonna call that a good place to lay out. Sometimes you don't have to have um, the perfect layout. I'm gonna use two pieces of tape and secure my stencil to the boards so that nothing shifts. If you only tape in one spot, your stencil will shift all over the place. You want your stencil stable. Okay, so we're gonna get our dome brush. The dome brush is the brush you're gonna use so that you don't bleed under. If you wanna see more videos about that, um, check in the description below or go see our playlist on how to stencil. Okay, so we're gonna use um, black is our drop shadow and white is our lettering. I'm gonna start with the white and we're gonna kind of ghost the layout of the stencil. So I'm going to dip into the paint and then wipe off my brush with like 10 little squiggles around. Um, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. The less is better because otherwise you will make a big mess with bleeding under. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bottoms of my letters and I'm just swirling all the way across. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna show me where my stencil will be when I put the lettering back on and I'm gonna do the drop shadow with this. So what we'll do is we'll take that up and you can see I just have that little base of the lettering. And now what I'll do is I will figure out what I'm doing, get it positioned back in place so everybody's in their right spot. Okay, and then I have a lower drop shadow so I'm gonna take our stencil and we're gonna drop it down evenly. And you can use um, the edge of your board and then I'm gonna drop it over to that side. So down and over. And then I can use the edge to see if I've got it even. Use my tape. All right, next we are going to do our drop shadow. We will do the entire letters um, with the black and then we'll move our stencil back to where it would be and we'll cover up the black. It's kind of a little bit of a pain um, to cover it back up, but it looks really good and it's worth the effort. All right, let's see what we've got going on. So we have lovely black. I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer just to make sure it's completely dry. And then we're gonna put our white letters on top. All right, let's find our stencil. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go back to the original position. Now what I should have done is I should have done the tops of my letters because I've covered up 
a lot of the other part of my letters. So we're going to wing it slightly and make everything opposite. So we'll go a little bit up and a little bit over this direction. Okay, so now we get our white paint on here. Now with the white, you're probably gonna wanna stipple a little bit because we're doing white over this really dark color. So that will be about the same technique. We're still gonna load our paint. We're still gonna wipe it off, but instead of swirling, we're gonna stipple up and down. And before we get all the way through, let's go ahead and take a little peek and see, oh, that's perfect. Can you see that um, drop shadow right there? That is lovely. Okay, I've got my first coat done and I will tell you that the amount of time and the amount of arm effort from stippling versus swirling is much different. So when you are stenciling, learn to swirl. It will make everything so much easier. Sometimes you still have to stipple, but swirling is where it's at. I'm gonna hit the blow dryer because when you stipple, you're applying much more paint. I'm gonna make sure everybody's dry. Wet paint doesn't like to stick to wet paint, so if the paint is dry, then the paint will stick better. All right, now I've finished that second layer. I'm gonna look and see if any of the letters look dark some spots. Maybe I can swirl to just finish them up, even everything up. Stippling can tend to add a little texture, so when you swirl you can kind of delete the texture. All right, let's do the reveal. Here we go. Peel this up. And perfect drop shadow every time. I love this technique because drop shadow is something that intimidates people when they're painting like you would not believe. So this just makes it super easy. We're gonna slide this away and we're gonna deal with our two ends. Remember that there's a really rough side to this. I didn't even stain the back of that because it's so rough. You can choose, if you're gonna put your boards at the end, you can choose to make them in a little bit. And then I don't know that I talked about this, so I'm gonna readdress it. The reason I stenciled before I put my boards together and did all the things is because if you have a stencil that's bigger than the area, like say your board was here, and you wanted that to lay down flat, it would be very difficult to get that to lay down flat. So by assembling it yourself, then you get to decide when you put the boards together. So we're gonna slide this away. And then we're gonna paint the tops of our boards. And let's see, I think I'll have that to the outside. And so that one be to the outside as well. And we're gonna use black and a foam brush and we're just gonna paint them black. Be careful about having too much paint in your brush so that you don't go over the edges. We just want the very top done. Okay guys, um, we are gonna do a little trick on how to apply a stripe. We're gonna use our mylar, put it kind of straight. Put my other board over here just to do the thing and we are gonna get out more white paint. I used all that white paint. Covering over a dark color with a light color is, takes a lot of paint. So we can do it two ways. I'm gonna show you two tricks. Um, one of my goals when I do these videos is to pass along as many helpful hints and trips, tick tricks. Try it again. One of my goals when I'm doing these videos is to show you guys as many cool tricks to help painting, make painting easier. So this is gonna be one of those. So I'll put that on there evenly. I want this under so I don't get paint on it right now. So what you can do is you can lay this on there and then you can just go stipple, stipple. That's one way. Or you can load some white paint and you can kind of just stipple, stipple with your foam brush. 
I'm on that little beveled edge, so it's a little bit trickier. But instead of taping, you can use your stencil as your straight edge. Go back to the beginning, get nice and based. Okay, you can also use the jumbo dubber. So that's three ways that you can get banding on there. Let's take a look at it. Ta-da! Got a nice little band. We'll flip it over. Get band on the other side. Wipe off your paint because you never know when something will touch something you don't want it to touch. And this band ought to be a much cleaner looking band because I'm not on that really rough hewn area. All right, we're going to use the T-square and the Ghost Rider, and that is what we try to do so much is to tell you all the cool tools. These are things that are invaluable when you are painting or doing any kind of DIY. Uh, make sure that if you like this content and you think that we're giving you valuable things, give us a thumbs up. Um, you can subscribe, you can ring the bell, and then you'll be notified when we have new content. Okay, so we'll put the T-square at the end of our boards. I think I want them. That's a little crowded, so I think I'm going for an inch and a half mark right there. And I'll go ahead, I only need end to end. And now we put the board down and we want it the rough side to the outside. You want to make sure to use your fingers to check to make sure that your board is nice and centered on your wood. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and hammer on this guy. This is where things will get a little bit loud. We're using, um, this is, so this is dimensional lumber and this is a um, one and a quarter inch wire nail. That is what we've chosen. In order for this to work right, you're gonna put two nails in different spots on the top, two nails in different spots on the bottom, and one nail in the middle. And so I'll start with one at the top and one at the bottom, and then work on the stability. If you don't put enough nails, your board can go wonky. Ask me how I know that one. After you've nailed, hammered your first nail, you wanna make sure that this board didn't do any shifting, so make sure it's exactly where you want it. Okay, second side. So that is all put together. We can remove our tape. Now we're nice and secure. Make sure you stick around. I'm gonna show you how to put a hook um, hanger thing on the back of this as well. So we need to put our paw prints, but before we do the paw prints, let's go ahead and touch up our little nail heads. We use a small dome brush, wipe that off, and just give them a little touch of paint, just so they're not shiny and distracting. All right, we're ready for paw prints. So we're going to just put them right on here, kind of center them up. And I don't have a good place to tape, but guess what I can do? Is when you don't have a good place to tape, what you do is you tape through something. So I'll tape through more than one spot, and then that makes my stencil nice and secure. Get our brush, paper towel, and we are going to, oh, not black on black. No, indeed, that will not show up. Okay, white paint. And once again, what we learned on the lettering is that we're gonna go ahead and stipple because swirling would take three or four or five coats. So we'll just go ahead and do the stipple. Okay, and we lift and voila, puppy prints. Now we're gonna repeat on the other side the same as this side. All right, I'm taking apart my stent, uh, my um, hardware. Um, we got the hardware from Home Depot. That was really an intro, no, we did not get the hardware from Home Depot. We got the hardware from Walmart um, and shout out to them. They had a lot of really good affordable hardware. So that's a really good source. I would have not thought of that, but one of our 
um, teammates here um, at Studio R12 goes there and gets knobs and hardware all the time. And so he was gracious enough to go and find them. So how many pieces of hardware do we want on this? Do we want to go with six? We've got leashes, toys, and coats, and that kind of thing. Or do we take them away? And maybe we just do the four. I think maybe I'm thinking the four. So that gives me room in between for things to be bulky and stuff. Put those away. Now we get to measure again. If we want to every four inches, it's gonna give me too many marks. Maybe I'm back to having your ah, crash. What did that give me? That gave me one, two, three, three, four, and five. We'll do five. What I have done is I have, there's a little flat base to this um, piece of hardware. So I've made it so that the flat base will go directly to the edge of my um, board. And then what I did is I went ahead and measure how far that was. And I've got my mark for where it needs to go. And then I'm going to make sure that I just nudge it um, up to all of those places. And then we'll drill through. And then I gave myself a mark on the top of each one of these. Okay, got the hooks on, that was painful. Not painful like owie painful, but painful like sweat painful. So I love this. Now let's show you how to put a hanger on the back. All right, we are gonna use a D-ring that are available on Amazon. And um, they're super neat um, hangers or attachers. Okay, I like the dark on that. We're gonna go in four inches and down four inches, if that doesn't get me to my board size. It gets me to my board size, so we'll go down three inches. Okay, which is right about where I was. And then we will go ahead and just, hopefully just screw this directly right on there. You want them so that they're on the flat side. Oh, these are tiny. And they're actually going to go that direction. Okay. All right, then you take a piece of wire and you put it in through there and you twist it. And then you put it, bring it down to the other side and you take a piece of wire and you twist that. And of course you can always adjust where you put these D-rings. All right, guys, this turned out amazing. I hope that you've enjoyed the lesson. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all the things, and we'll see you in the next video.